today. And speaking of the auto industry, Tesla is set to begin pre-orders on its newest vehicle, the Model 3, next month. The vehicle's major selling point is its $35,000 price tag. However, Tesla shares have taken a beating so far this year, uh, falling over 38%. We want to bring in Doherty and company analyst Andrea James, who joins us now from Seattle. Uh, Andrea, you have a buy rating on the stock. You have a $335 price tag. Uh, what makes you so positive? $355, and I... Uh, well, the Model 3 is going to come to market in, next year, and they're going to start taking orders you know, next month. And I calculate that they've done about a million test drives of people going in to test drive that Model S, and probably 80 to 90 percent of those people can't really afford a Model S, so they have a nice pool of car buyers to tap into when they sell the Model 3. Yet the question is, for investors, will Tesla need to raise capital? The company has said no, but investors don't remain convinced. And there's uh, going to be a big question mark, as Corey Johnson, said, uh, Corey Johnson of Bloomberg News has said, over free, co free cash flow, whether it's going to be cash flow break even. That's right. So in 2016, Tesla needs to do what it says it's going to do. The company has said it's committed to having as much money on the balance sheet at the end of the year as they have at the beginning of the year without going to the capital markets. And the truth is, is most people on Wall Street don't believe them. Um, but the company's committed to it, and they just have to do what they say they're going to do, and I think the stock can work. How can Tesla not raise capital this year when they have to sort of, their battery cell production is going to start up this year, so there may be some kind of setbacks or more money intensive uh, operations as it goes into production. They got to do a lot of marketing. They want to expand geographically. Like, how can they not raise capital? Well, so I think I'm looking for eight and a half billion in revenue in 2016. And if you get a decent gross margin off of that, um, depending on whether SG&A and R&D falls, falls through and say about a billion dollars in CapEx, there's enough cash flow left over to pay for continuing operations. So if they can hit, say, 80 to 90,000 units uh, sold of Model S and Model X at a decent gross margin, then that's how they get there. What's a decent gross margin for you? I'd like to see better than 22%. You know, 25% to 30% is sort of the long-term goal on the Model S, but FX has taken a hit. Um, it really kind of pushed that down. Um, they did do some price increases in Europe um, to kind of offset the impact of foreign currencies, but they're having a little bit of a currency translation impact. I want to go back to the Model 3 and the introduction of that. Do you trust, Andrea, uh, Tesla, when it says it can get it right with the delivery schedule when the Model X production was delayed and the vehicle remains production constrained? That's a great question. So Model, Model S was uh, even ahead of a, ske a schedule to on time. The Model X was delayed two years. Um, that was because of very specific things to the Model X. I think it had to do a lot with scope creep, wanting the Model X to be perfect. Um, but when it came to bringing the Model S to market, Tesla was on time. Now, granted, um, it's a two-product company right now. You've got Model S and Model X, and we're 50-50 on cars being on time. But I do think that getting Model 3 right is a huge priority at the company. You've got a lot of smart people focusing on it. So we will see, but I'm confident that they're working on it, and they should do a good job. Uh, the impact of lower oil prices. So... Another great question. I think lower oil prices have affected the stock more so than the car buyer, especially when they bring Model 3 to market. It's going to be a $27,500 car. There's a lot of people out there in their 20s and in their 30s who want to own this car, mm -hmm. and I think they will sell it. So low oil, I think, has affected the stock more than demand. Fair point. All right, Andrea, thanks very much. Andrea James, analyst at Doherty, Doherty and Company. All right, coming up at 3 p.m. on Bloomberg Markets, Chinese tech guru Kai Fu Lee coming up. Disruption is just another word for opportunity, if you know where to look. Homes transforming into hotels.